Hello VC. Thought I would uh, continue experimenting with this a little bit. Uh, just got home and was thinking about the topic for maybe a, another video. Something maybe a little bit more related to to the town that I have lived in most of my life. Grew up in. Uh, it's Detroit. Been in and around the Detroit area for, for most of my life. And uh, you know when you live in a city like this, the music that's in this area uh, it's just everywhere and it was always always a big part of of who I uh, who I am and who I became um, even from the time that I was a small boy I remembered hearing things and I, I didn't realize what a treat it was because you go to other cities and and I don't think they have the same connection to, to music that they do here whether it's you know whether it's um, the rock music of uh, the Stooges and the MC5 or Motown or uh, uh, techno music or house music or whatever it might be. There's just a lot of um, great music that came from this area. And we were used to seeing people like that around. You'd go to clubs when I got older and, and uh, see members of bands. Uh, I remember seeing Rod Tyner at a bar back in the, in the late 80s, early 90s and uh, just the reaction of the crowd to them. And it was uh, pretty cool. But anyway, I, just to see some background, it would be remiss for me to, to even talk about music that I love and, and care about without going back to kind of the roots in some ways. And that was um, a couple different bands, maybe three, that just seem part of that scene. The first one that I'll mention is uh, two records that I don't think it mentioned that often. Um, maybe because one of the guys in the in the band, there, it's the Amboy Dukes. The first and second Amboy Duke records. Um, the big hit out of this is uh, Journey to the Center of the Mind, which is a kind of psychedelic classic, I think, and, uh, and a, without a doubt a great track. And uh, um, I think kind of gets washed away that that's uh, Ted Nugent who who went on to be a big mouth and uh, say a lot of things that I think make people even in this town cringe um, when they hear him. But there's no denying his involvement in two really fine I think um, uh, psychedelic rock albums and there's just um, these are both worthwhile uh, Journey to the Center of the Mind is obviously the one to take a look at. And I think you can still grab these at a pretty reasonable price. I think that that won't be the case forever. So if you haven't grabbed one of these, they're well worth... I see these all over the place. Being in Detroit, um, they're just plentiful and they're everywhere. So it may not be true in other cities. But um, if you do see these, it's a, it's a good time to grab them before they they really start to increase in, in value. So that would be, you know, one of them. In fact, the one quick story I would have when I was a very small boy and uh, my uh, parents used to leave me with a, with a cousin who was a, a member of a, a biker gang. And, uh, and guys would come and play guitar and sit around a campfire. And I remember being a fairly small boy and, and uh, seeing those guys outside. And it wasn't until years and years later that um, my cousin told me, you know who, who those musicians were? And, no, I had no idea. And he said, it was the Amboy Dukes. And uh, which, you know, <laughs> put a little bit different wrinkle on it. But obviously, in addition to the Amboy Dukes, who were maybe the least, um, uh, today, the, the least well-known of three bands, um, the other ones being, firstly, uh, and, and, and these have just become so uh, Stooges' first album, Stooges' second album, and Raw Power. You know, today, these records have become classics. But, you know, I can remember going to record stores back in the, you know, when I first started collecting records and seeing copies of of the Stooges' first album for five and six dollars. 
and uh, it, it, they were really kind of forgotten about at that point until it became legendary and then suddenly these became something that everybody wanted. There's no denying the, their importance to, in fact I'd make the argument that perhaps the first punk rock record ever was uh, I Now I Want to Be Your Dog, that that on the first album that um, pretty much was everything that all the English punk bands would go on to do was right there. Um, a couple additions to the Stooges, you know, small catalog would be um, this. Some of this would have gone on to be um, on a next Stooges album. It's a great album anyway, a lot of fun. And uh, Kill City. Um, if, if this, if if things had worked out a little bit differently, that that this album could have gone on to be, or at least some of it, to be what we might have thought of as um, uh, a next Stooge album. That and a few other random songs that you hear around that I think I have on a couple compilations um, that you really uh, want to hear. So then, in addition to that, um, the band that pretty much defines the the uh, Detroit sound, so to speak, which would be uh, the MC5. Uh, when I first bought this album when I was a teenager, I the record store that I went to didn't even have a copy available in the store. You couldn't get it. And uh, they had to special order this record for me from from the UK. And this, uh, this is an original, but um, that was back when I was just a teenager and it took me oh maybe a month to get that record it was this record and uh and it's just funny that even being here in detroit you had to special order it from from uh, the uk so i think we're all pretty familiar with with these i'm not going to spend too much time on them um this is the last studio or our last uh, mc5 album still really good um sister Anne, classic you can see that recently covered by very well covered by Alice Cooper and uh, then of course the one I think everybody knows this is the one that everyone kind of looks for um, the prices have gotten silly but uh, this is the one that had um, the, the, the writing by John Sinclair on the inside John Sinclair um, the, uh, the manager of the MC5 and also the founder of the White Panther Party and uh, really at this point when, when this album came out um, as close as a, the United States ever came to a true revolutionary artistic revolutionary and the system was, was tough on him and it wasn't shortly after that that he was imprisoned for a, uh, on a marijuana possession charge and, uh, and the rest is history but so the Stooges and the MC5, so that kind of, you know, that's kind of the, the bulk of, of those two careers. There are a lot of bootlegs. One that I would really, really suggest, which is um, the MC5, Babes and Arm. If you like the MC5, this is an album you want uh, to have. Uh, the versions of, of it almost works as a, like a best of or greatest hits. But these are demos, and the sound quality on the Stooges album was always questionable. Well, Stooges um, MC5 album was always questionable. Just some some wrong decisions I think were made. Whether they were trying to create a sound for AM radio, or you hear lots of different things. But this helps bring out some of the power of those songs even better than. You know, look then looking at you does on on that album. Shaking Street and American Roots on this have to be heard, and uh, um, well, you don't have to be heard. But if you're inclined to listen to them, this is something you might want to take a look at. Babes in Arm. Um, that's a boot, it's a yeah, it's bootleg. It's kind of a semi-legitimate release, is I guess the way that I would put it. Um, so then after that period as we go move more into the 70s the Stooges are gone the MC5 is gone and the members of, of both bands kind of come together um, 
at a certain point to to form a, a band that I can remember, you know, hearing about. Even I was probably a, a preteen at the time, but the, the Sonic Rendezvous band. And this is again a semi-legitimate release. Um, it came right from most of these tapes came right from the band members. At the time, they had no record contract, and they were just looking to to capitalize on whatever legacy that they had. Um, but this is a, a great live recording. It does include include uh, Scott Morgan, Fred Sonic Smith, and uh, Rock Action Aniston. Um, great, great live recording. Um, but in addition to this, the only official um, song that the Sonic Rendezvous Band ever released was this single. And the, for my money, the greatest garage rock, punk rock song ever recorded. City Slang. Which is right there. This is um, not the original single. Um, got my eye out for an original one day, but they have um, it's very hard to find them in decent condition, and it's very hard to find them at a reasonable price. It's a shame because I can remember seeing them around town at very reasonable prices. So you, you snooze, you lose, right? But this is exactly what the original looked like. And uh, City Slang is got a riff and a sound that I think encompasses everything that Detroit rock and roll ever could or ever would be. And um, the fact that these two bands came together to really do not much more and just produce one amazing garage rock sound that just um, a riff that never lets up and uh, a, a lyric that spits out like um, the complaint of a generation left behind and um, and that's what it was never really went anywhere and uh, never really got I can remember hearing it a little bit on some of the local radio stations back then, back when uh, when local radio still had some autonomy before the corporate world had taken all that over. Today, you would never hear that, or you would hear it very, you'd hear it on a few specific programs. But back in the day, you could still hear things like this sneak onto the radio and fit in really, really nicely. But, um, so that's kind of um, a quick overlay of, I think, three bands, the Amboy Dukes, um, the MC5, and, uh, and the Stooges, who I think are the backdrop of the Detroit rock scene from that era, from, uh, from the 1960s and the early 1970s, and then springboarding off into a couple places, like the Sonic Rendezvous Band, that um, I think could be overlooked if you were really into the, the sound of those that you may want to think about. You can still grab a lot of those um, gray area Sonic Rendezvous live shows um, at a reasonable price. They're very good and uh, you're going to get songs that you never ever officially came out. So, um, that's about it, I think, you see, there's not, uh, we'll cover some other areas and we'll go into techno and electronic music um, uh, later on um, and, and capture that part of the scene, but I think this was foundation building because from this came so many amazing bands that to this day, that sound, you know, and, and some people argue that the Stooges were punk and the MC5 was the beginning of metal. And I, I, I think that's a, a simplification of the of reality, but um, but I think both of that the there's no doubt that the MC5 was when you listen to them live was bombastic, and uh, there's no no doubt in my mind that the Stooges were the beginning of of what later went on to be the Ramones and and. Uh, 
and the Damned and the Sex Pistols and and all of all of those kind of bands. Um, it all started it all started right there. Of course, you you can look even go beyond that into the the '60s uh, garage bands that are plentiful on collections like the Nuggets collections, which I have, and and a few others. Um, so you can always find a bit more of the history there when you look and. I suppose that's what I've always tried to do, and what maybe I hope that that this my channel can do is uh, help point you towards a few of those uh, places that might have gotten overlooked. That's all. So, anyway, thanks for your time, and um, let me know what you think. Bye.